Hi, I'm just going to give you a quick run through some of the personalization features available within Project in a Box and its supporting packages. So first it's worth us understanding or reiterating again what it is we know about a method template. This is what controls um, the type of project that we're presented with within Project in a Box. So it controls the structure of the project, the navigation of it, um, some of the reporting information associated with it, the templates that can be used on it, etc. So th the sort of first thing really to, to appreciate is the diagrams, and these navigation diagrams are all say owned by the method template. And they, when you click on a, nav on a navigation diagram, it can either take you to one of three things: another navigation diagram, um, to uh, a explorer, which shows you then some documents associated with that particular process. In this case. DP1, um, or it can also be linked to take you through direct or hyperlink to a, a location on your intranet, um, network, website, etc. So those are the sort of three type of navigation elements we have, and you can combine those together very richly to have multiple layered navigations. You can cut data um, and documents on the project in a number of different axes as well if you want to. Um, uh, but the basic element is navigation and then process document structure. Uh, we also mimic that then um, in a menu um, element here, so we can link to particular process diagrams straight away, or we could perhaps use the menu to link to um, uh, perhaps summaries of all controls documents or something of that type. So um, a different, uh, different way of looking at the data perhaps. So let's have a look at a different method template just to see the sort of uh, variation that we can have. So um, if we have a look at one here, which is our... Um, triple P proposal preparation process type of method. This is aimed at taking you through um, a bid process towards a successful project and it works in exactly the same sort of way. We click on the the, uh, the diagram and we get um, documents presented to us for that point in the process and as you can see here fairly similar logical sort of process. You can do very many things in terms of diagrams here within your method template and obviously you can put any sort of documents you want to in here. Now the other thing to notice is that um, we can alias the normal sections that we would have within um, a project. So normally we would have project level documents, we would have stage level documents, and we'd have specialist documents. And here we have proposal level documents, we have um, sections of the proposal that we might be producing, and then we have specialist documents. But again, you can alias those to be anything you want them to be. And, and a, a common thing that people will do with their method template to personalize it for their own particular use is to change the process diagram. Um, we never show actual customer work, but we have a couple of sort of mock-ups here that we might be able to look at. So this is um, a mocked-up oil and gas type method where we have standard prints um, structure behind, but we've named the processes to... Um, put them into the more the natural territory of the particular organization so um, they can recognize uh, the, the particular section and then sat behind that we have the documents that um, the prince would want them to use and again here work packages and credit instead of stages because that's the language that the organization is familiar with so we can see a wide range of different methods all running alongside each other within the application. So how do we um, how do we customize those? Well, if we think about customizing them once the project itself has started, um, if uh, as a user we have modified permissions, that is the top level of permissions on the project, the manager type permissions, um, then we can add documents in, either existing documents, so um, add a document that's used elsewhere in the project in this location, um, or we can add a new document into this location um, and, uh, and that will allow us to personalize a standard methodology for the particular project in, uh, uh, that we're looking at. But if we want to make changes to the overall method template so that the changes apply to every single project that we create, then we need to use the method manager tool. So we provide method manager as a free tool to help customers build, maintain their own methods themselves. So you can own your method. It's ridiculous to have to come back to the vendor all the time to have tiny changes made, operational iterations that you want to make to your methods as you move forward and, and your approach evolves. Um, so this way you can uh, do these yourself. And what we have here within the uh, method manager tree is an extended tree structure of the method template. Um, we build, we progress our way down here in stages so we can see uh, this is our uh, BP2 method template, so our sort of intermediate sized project. And we can see here that we've got a standard set of processes, control to start, directing a project, etc. 
And at the project level of documents, we want to have a certain set of documents showing within within that process each time and a certain set of documents shown within directing a project. And we can build this structure up simply by right clicking on, on the various node and add a new process or add a new sub process, delete a process even, or within a sub process we can add documents, either um, a new document, some new content we want to add, um, or a, uh, an existing document that's used elsewhere. If we just want to make the very simplest sort of change to a method template, um, very, very common when people first implement the system is to open up all the documents in the template and perhaps change the logo. So put your own logo in instead of the project in the box one, and then every project you add will automatically come through with your own logos in. And of course, you can extend this further on if you want to, to come in here and um, change the language. So it might be that you call them references instead of IDs. Um, you might want to change some columns, add some extra columns. There may be, in fact, existing um, uh, there may be existing uh, files that you already use. Um, so you may already have your own template for a checklist or a mandate, mandate PID, um, checkpoint reports. Very common for organizations to have their own template. So you can therefore come uh, in here um, and you can uh, locate the various documents. So you could delete the mandate uh, and then add your own mandate in. And then every time you add launch the project, it will come through with your own document. So simplest sort of personalization is done at that sort of document level here. We keep the existing processes and navigation structures. And that's at a project level. And then also within the blue here, a bit further down, we can do the same sort of thing as a stage level. And we can see we have a very small set of stage documents that are created during the starting of the project. And then many more are used during the main body of the project. And obviously then, uh, very few when we come to closing a project or none when we come to closing a project. And so we can have that that template defined for the stage. Every time we add a new stage, the whole load of blank documents associated with delivering that stage gets added. So we get a new product description template, a new stage plan template, etc. So we can build up that structure and that's what's used when we create the project from the method template. Next thing is then the navigation. So here we have um, navigation, it's very simple to set up. Some, uh, you just take a JPEG, you can draw a JPEG in whatever your preferred drawing package is. You add the JPEG here, and then you define the click areas on it. So we can see the little blue dashed lines here indicate the, uh, the navigation areas. So when, when we have a little form for managing that, and it tells us when somebody clicks on here, we want them to go to Explore. So take me to the Explorer and show me the directing of project documents. And as I say, three types of links, either to another image, to an explore or to a shortcut so we can see this one here takes us to the shortcut takes what takes us off to our pins to primer url location so very simple to add a new one uh, we, so we just got a jpeg perhaps i want to um uh take people to um guidance materials if they uh if they click on the project in the box logo so i think i can give it a name i can say i want to go and explore and i want to go and find well I don't have one here, but we could have added a process earlier on with guidance materials and uh, included the documents we wanted in that. And then that would be available here as an option for me to navigate to. So I can um, uh, I can set up my own navigation. Obviously, we can personalize and customize the standard methods the Project in the Box provides for you. But you can also use this to create a blank method template and develop your own entirely personalized custom methodology. And for many of our larger customers, they buy Project in the Box as a host for their own existing method. They've got a um, set of templates, processes, procedures, guidance materials in a large-ish project management manual, and they want to have a host for that to apply structure, configuration management, reporting, etc. And so all that can be brought in. So hopefully that gives you just a quick uh, taste to what can be done with, um, uh, with Project in the Box and Method Manager for personalizing methods to match your own um, needs. If you've got any further questions, please do contact us to, uh, to discuss those. Thank you.